Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Taking responsibility is a necessary first step to turning over a new leaf. I'm going to be talking about how Nigeria is producing motherless babies. There is a term that has become increasingly commonplace during this period of the global fight against the pandemic. And no, it's not social distancing, but taking responsibility. It is in light of this that I want to make a bold assertion. Nigeria is producing motherless babies. And by Nigeria, I mean every one of us that make up Nigerian society. My sister recently shared an article with me that recounted how a desperate Nigerian girl ended up selling her baby boy rather than return home pregnant to face the music of shame and possible disownment. Note that this was after she was advised that an abortion would be both dangerous for her and the baby. It is a real tragedy when a society functions in such a way that it creates a culture that consistently puts people between a rock and a hard place. The layered betrayals that make up this tragedy of that young girl's story are notably the male counterpart or exploiter for impregnating and abandoning her, her parents for instilling in her a greater sense of fear than love, extended family members and the larger community for constructing a narrative of stigma and condemnation rather than redemption, government for not providing or supporting organizations that give such people a way of escape, but rather forces them to make the less than upright choice. From the baby traders who run the baby factories to the respectable couples who are ready to buy these babies on the black market, all, as far as I'm concerned, are culpable. We're not even speaking of the constant presence of poverty in the land that makes options like baby factories part of the demand and supply chain. An article written by the Vanguard in 2016 states that record number of baby factories were raided or closed down in the southeastern states of Abia, Anambra, Eboi, Enugu, and Imo that year, according to NAPTIP. It states that recorded data showed that a total of 14 were discovered in the first nine months of 2016, up from six in 2015 and 10 in 2014. There are also more recent data. We're also told that newborns were sold for up to $5,000 whereas the mothers of the babies were given as little as 20,000 Naira or 50,000 Naira. I have previously heard stories of young girls who find themselves pregnant after suffering the trauma of rape, only to be abandoned by their family and ostracized by society. But for the odd good Samaritan, many of these young ladies are suicidal, and I shudder to think of the avenues their limited options have led them to. You and I must cease to look the other way in these matters. We must rather seize the opportunities we come across to share compassion when we meet people who are essentially victims of their society. We are that society, and it is we who can change the narrative by any means necessary. It's time we all took responsibility. Yeah, uh, taking responsibility first and foremost, um, the welf security and welfare of the people you know, is the government's responsibility. And um, in ensuring that security and welfare, um, if you break it down a bit further, there's need for proper education, orientation, and sanctions. But when all of these are failing in society, you, you know, it becomes a lawless one. And I always say it, in a state of lawlessness, it is illegal to be law-abiding. We ought to, um, Dr. Uh, Helen Paul came out to say that she's a product of mm -hmm. rape. And today she's a proud PhD holder and she's um, a model. She's everything rolling into one. Mm. How come 
we are not using her. I did an advocacy on her once here. Mm -hmm. How come we're not using her to tell a story? How come government is not using her to, you know, push this narrative that, you know, you can't, sometimes some of these things happen, but you shouldn't throw away the baby with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. Literally. You have religion and cultural beliefs also that nobody is questioning. And so the more you push this religious belief and cultural beliefs, you know, the more you create fear in the mind of these young people. And with even the couples know, who are adopting, adopting through the black market. Yes, through the black market. Mm -hmm. Because there's a stigma that they some, don't have their some, own child. Yes, that they don't have their own child. Mm. And then government processes also are very cumbersome and you know so until government sit down and look at this area and say, mm. Oh, this is a menace. This is a big menace that is waiting to explode in our face and we need to take responsibility and check admitted we'll just talk and at the end of the someday some of these people will be involved and then it, it will be too late to actually checkmate at that time so my my own angle specifically is with regards to what you mentioned about the fact that some of these ladies actually can't go home yeah uh, you know mm -hmm. after whatever you know whether they got whether it was consensual or not mm -hmm. and if they get pregnant and they can't go home for me this speaks to one of the biggest issues that i have with the current constitution of Nigeria. Okay. As I'm sure you're aware, the rights that women have access to in Nigeria are significantly fewer than those that men have access to. So, for example, uh, if I'm not, if I remember correctly, a married woman is not allowed to apply for a passport on her own without her husband. Okay, Jean, I'm not even aware of that. Yes, yeah, so there are lots of these issues. So, the, where I'm going with this is that this is this <laughs> is a society where both culturally and legally, a woman is less of a person. Mm than a man. And where that is a problem is that where a woman ends up pregnant in a situation where she's out of wedlock or, and to or be clear, raped. to be clear, these things will happen. These things have always happened. They will yeah. always happen. Mm. There's no, so any, any conversation about this that tries to like adopt this mor uh, moralizing tone is a waste of everybody's time because these things will always happen. Mm. Many of us are, are products of, uh, are, many of our parents didn't tell us. Mm. <laughs> so let's just be very clear about this. Mm. So babies being conceived and born out of wedlock is a thing that has always happened and will continue to happen as long as humanity exists it will not stop so the issue then is how do we, how do we protect mm. the women so how, how do you give them access to certain rights yeah and resources such that they don't end up vulnerable and then you know they end up being poached by these baby yeah. factory operators yeah. and yeah. you know yeah so I, I, I agree with you. I agree with David. Sorry to to to, to no, jump please in there, do. But I, you know, I wholeheartedly agree with David. I think uh, my point is the fact that um, you know there's a role for government, and I think that uh, that is really where governments should come in and take um, some of that responsibility from two sides: um, from providing a safe location, counselling, a platform where uh, people who who have that challenge can go to um, and, and get proper counseling and get proper care. Um, so that, that's one area. Because I think that, you know, um, we treat these people, especially the young women who um, fa are facing this challenge, um, you know, th th there's a failure of, of, in terms of the cultural um, stigma that they face. Yeah. Um, government should not be also... Because uh, you also find it's, it's like going to a police station, like David saying, you, you're a woman, you go to a, you, you go to a police station to complain that um, some guy molested you, uh, and then the, the policeman will start asking, ah, but what did you wear, mm. or how can you be out later? This, you know, I, and then you know, almost like victim shaming the person. Mm. Yeah. But I think government should be should take a position where um, the role of government is actually becoming a safe haven mm. for people that are vulnerable like that. Um, and providing them with, and of, of, of course, the issue of, of more public advocacy yeah. um, should be should should come on um, from from you know secondary schools and all yeah. kinds of uh, uh, positions where uh, this sort of things are likely to happen. Um, to find ways in which uh, um, we can provide a lot more information to them, um, to the young people, um, and not just the, the the young women, but also the young boys, also yeah. in terms of having more education yeah. about being sexually active and sexual health and all, all those kind of things that mm. are important things. Because we people take it, you know, uh, position that even providing young people with information or education about sexual health um, you, is, is uh, shameful. Uh, you know, uh, uh, quickly, like yeah. David had said. 
whether you provide information or not, it's these fact. things will happen. Mm. Oh, absolutely. We, we have, we, 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 it, it, it's, it's I agree. human nature. I agree. We have Ministry of Women Affairs. We have Ministry for Youth Development. We have Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. These various departments should collaborate mm. in these sectors to say, it is not enough to say we, 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 we close down a baby factory. You close one, three will spring up mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are always located in remote areas. They always have people. Mm. You have people who are homeless. Why are they homeless? Mm. And so if government is able to provide social security for somebody and he knows that, look, even if I have a baby, I can get a job, I can have access to a home, I can take care of that baby. Mm -hmm. There will be no need to want to sell the baby to exactly. somebody else. Exactly. But when you look at the circumstances, you don't have a so, home, you don't have so, a roof so, over so, your head, you don't so have liberals. a... So, Liberus, uh, yeah. sorry to, to, to cut in. Please so, do. Uh, you're, just, you're describing a situation of poverty then. So, yes. it's, it's more of, a, you know, this is the causal thing is poverty. Poverty not is driving poverty. a lot of people not just. This. No, I'm talking about solutions. I'm talking about solutions, not just okay. the cost now. Take, for mm -hmm. example, as a young man in the UK, as a young lady, you can apply for a council flat. Mm. And even so that independence, you that can independence have. if you have that independence, there's a limit to how vulnerable you can be. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so there's need for government to begin to look at these areas. How do we ensure that we create, you know, these platforms, mm -hmm. these, um, these cushion, these opportunities, yeah. Yeah. so that you can assess these things, even if your parents reject and refuse to no, let accommodate me, let me you. Let me give some insight because I'm pursuing, uh, I know I did the advocacy, but I'm, I'm pursuing this matter beyond just doing an advocacy. And because I know people who are directly involved, particularly one lady who gets lots of these young ladies and she's just acting like a good Samaritan. One lady was gang raped and yet she had to run away from her family because the family were, you know, she was really afraid of them. But she was saying that even the government bodies, and I don't know if she'll go on record to say this, even the gender affairs, when they get these babies off the motherless babies' homes, they literally sell the babies themselves. So yeah. they're selling them one point something million. They're giving these girls those pittance. Why don't they at least come up front, give the girls enough? She's saying they should at least pay the girls rent for like you know, maybe six months so that girls can be up on their feet and learn a trade and, and help them. And because if you really want to help them, they know what to do. Ekene, that's because there are no sanctions. You have a commissioner, a minister who comes on board, is looking for loopholes to an, create avenue to make money. Mm. That's why he or she is in and government. Nobody is overseeing. And so nobody is overseeing him. And then when you complain, you're looking, you're, you're, you're looked at as, you know, a nobody. No rights. And so, why, who are you to complain? After all, they are doing you a favor by even giving you 200000 for a baby you can't take care of. Yes. You know, they are that arrogant. Yeah. And, and so, if there is responsibility, if give you criminal 000. justice system also needs to be effective in this. And I know Lagos State Government has a department for this, but it is not enough to just have a department. If you create special courts where matters such as this are tried timelessly and people are sent to jail for such offenses, yes. Then we would know that we have started yes, somewhere. Because a situation where you have, you know, all of this, even the government is culpable, government officials are culpable, then there will be no hope yeah. than for these young ladies to sell the, the, babies. The, the babies. And then the guys also, nobody is talking about but them, yeah, nobody is no holding them responsible. Yeah. You know, a situation where your son impregnates your house help. And then you send the house help away from home, oh boy. and nobody is taking responsibility. Go the ownership. state, the police also, you know, because you're a rich man, the police comes and then they, they sweep the matter under the carpet. You know, we can't continue like this no, as a can. society. Just, just quickly, feel okay, into quickly, because <laughs> <and remember, laughs> we're about uh, to round up on this segment. But go ahead. Uh, he also made a point about uh, the fact that sexual education is not just for girls; it's mm. for boys yeah. too. And I remember reading a few weeks ago an account of. A lady who is involved in, with an NGO that does sexual health education for secondary school students, and she said she went into a to a classroom. I think it was an SS2 classroom, an SS3 classroom, and it was, it was about consent. What they were discussing that day, and she said throughout the 30 minutes that she spoke, she saw discomfort on the faces of the boys in the class, like real discomfort. They were uncomfortable that, because they hadn't heard it know, before. Because basically, she was trying to explain to the girls in the class. Mm. That this, they can they can say no. Yeah, that and and that if you said no and this happened anyway, then you it's were rape. raped. <laughs> In case you didn't know. So, okay, sorry, we have to stop it there. Um, we, we're out of time on this segment.
To accept responsibility, it helps if others point out to you your blind spots. We rely on your feedback for this. On homework can be smart work, Oladile Dosumu has a lot to say, and he says, it's about time they started trusting their employees. Working from home is becoming the norm. If employers employ the right caliber of people in the first place, then micromanaging like they do in Nigeria will have to stop. When you employ the right people, give them the chance to actually show their abilities. As long as they are, there are checks and balances in place, it's a win-win situation. A lot of Nigerian employers think they have to be smartest in their business. Like Steve Jobs said, it doesn't make sense to hire smart people and tell them what to do. We hire smart people to tell us what to do. Please say it some more, Ladile. <laughs> I, like, I like the sound of what you're saying. Foreign versus traditional gods is still gathering momentum amongst you. Emeka, take, take notes. <laughs> Airward Forsen says, we need more of this kind of talk. This is one of the talks we Africans should have. OK. Also, AW says in capital letters, of course, and your leaders or presidents are the overseers of the colonial master's estates, which you call country. Africa is still a slave colony now, wow, and there is a solution to it. It's a soft power of awareness, love, and unity. Oh, what a way to go, AW. You didn't see that coming. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, David will be charting the course of our democracy. Over to you, David.